welcome to HSC Goals on a wonderful day today. Um, if you're new on this channel, I'm inviting you to subscribe, like, and share the video with your friends so that we can make workplaces safe for everyone. My topic today is an interesting one and I want to demystify the myths about wedding, welding, fumes, and drinking milk. So this topic is rather interesting, but I, I really want to show you that it's not going to be a lecture um, involving a lot of chemistry, but just a little bit. So bear with me when I talk about it, because it's very important that you get to understand why so many welders or so many miners think that using milk or drinking milk before or after doing welding or being exposed to fumes and dust and poisonous gases may be um, a remedy to poison or having a poisonous effect because of that particular job. So welding is one of the most important processes that has allowed us to become the 21st person, uh, 21st century person and modernized man that we are today. Uh, because the idea of joining materials together has allowed us to build big, wonderful structures. Um, so we've built machinery, we've built industries and large infrastructures and have done so many amazing things because of this particular small process called welding okay so um, this process however um, produces visible smoke that contains harmful metals and fumes okay so the water fumes are classified as group one carcinogens by the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research, okay? Because um, your workplace exposure sometimes does not really tell you, but according to the World Health Organization standards on um, research in cancer, they've said it is group one, meaning that it causes cancer to human beings without a doubt. So, um, there are so many factors that um, are involved when we talk about worker exposure to fumes and it depends on a number of factors, okay? I really wanna, want you to understand this. Factor number one is the type of process of welding. Um, welding itself is classified into two groups. One is fusion where there is use of heat only and the other one uh, involves the use of heat and pressure okay so um, this type of process um, causes a different factors to now crop up when it comes to exposure the other thing is the base metal and filler metal that is used uh, so many welding rods are made of different types of metals because uh, or obviously of the materials that you want to join so this is also very very important okay then it also comes to the welding rod composition and the location of your works either your works are done in open air which means outside where there's plenty of ventilation or maybe that your works are done in an enclosed space where the ventilation is limited or controlled or it's not even there um, then it also comes to the welder work practices. The welder himself has a role to play in their exposure, okay? So um, then there is also the issue of obviously air movement and use of ventilation controls. Some workplaces don't use any ventilation uh, controls at all, but some which are more sophisticated and advanced and really care about their workers use uh, this mechanical ventilation controls. So the most common fumes and gases are, are your aluminium, your antimonies, your arsenic, beryllium, 
um, cadmium, chromium, cobalt, copper, iron, lead, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, silver, tin, titanium, vanadium, so many of these, okay? They are not limited to only these, but these are just some of the few, all right? Then the most common gases uh, are not limited to, but um, you can find surely um, carbon dioxide, then your nitrogen, your helium, zinc oxide, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide, uh, your carbon monoxide, and your ozone. Also, your phosgene and hydrogen fluoride and carbon dioxide. So, your occupational toxicology now talks about the different levels of exposures now to these um, metal fumes and gases during the welding process. So now we talk about um, where we're talking about acute exposure. This is exposure there and then, uh, especially this is very important, especially when you're working in a controlled space such as a confined space where your ventilation now is very limited because you are in an enclosed space. So the dangers that you find are asphyxiation, obviously because of these gases and these fumes replacing uh, oxygen now within your atmosphere or your, 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 your environment. So that it leads to now you breathing in these fumes rather than the oxygen that you really need for your body. Uh, when we now talk of um, the acute exposure as well, it causes obviously your eye irritation, uh, nasal system irritation, um, throat uh, irritation of your almost your whole breathing system. It's affected immediately if you do not use any PPE or a protective system or ventilation system, okay? Then it also causes uh, sometimes nausea and dizziness. Now when you look at prolonged um, oral exposure, that's now when we talk about the, uh, the high probabilities of uh, contracting illnesses like your lung cancer, your kidney, uh, your liver, your bone damages, uh, urinary tract uh, damages, your cancers, your stomach ulcers, and nervous system damage. Now, uh, the chemistry part now comes because of these uh, fumes, the metal fumes themselves, or the gases themselves that are produced in this time. So now what happens is that because almost all, all of our body tissues are made of protein so it means um when these fumes come into your body through your your nose or your mouth and you breathe it in or maybe through the skin so it means that they are going to be transported throughout your whole body by um or using your circulation system so now in your circulation system these uh fumes these metal particles or whatever or atoms now they just move to different parts of the body targeting different types of organs um, and causing different levels of damage to these organs because of um, their chemical contents so when you have uh, some of these um, metal fumes replacing something and disturbing the whole systems in your 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 blood works in your liver in your kidneys and stuff like that this is the important part now let's debunk the myth of milk all right i really want you to understand this it's so so simple okay so your milk is not a replacement of doing um the important safety systems because of welding you cannot drink milk to replace that here's why the reason why i'm saying the milk is not a substitute for taking your appropriate safety procedures is because of the toxicology that tells you that the fumes get into your body through inhalation through your skin and 
it goes into your bloodstream, okay? And straight to your organs through because of your circulatory system. Now, when you drink milk, milk, right? This is um, my milk. If I drink my milk, it goes straight to my digestive system, into my stomach, into the digestive system. All right. So these two don't mix. Your respiratory system and the digestive system are two divided. Although they're running like some uh, one at the front and one at the back, but they don't mix. So you can't have food like raw food mixing with uh, the whatever goes into your lungs. They don't mix anyway. It never happens. So your milk goes through your ordinary digestion it it's digested normally it's first in your stomach because of the the acid that's there there's whatever of the proteins in there and goes to the intestine the stuff like that then those gains the proteins and stuff from the milk and the calcium from the milk now is distributed in the body via the normal roots okay so uh, um this myth I, um, according to my understanding now is that um this milk um long long ago when um this man this uh whatever these ar aristocratic people and these business people the ruthless business people who owned mines and industries um back then during the industrial revolution when they started their mines and their industries um when they realized the damage being caused by some um, exposure to some of these uh, gases and metals they didn't want to compensate workers uh, according to the damage that was caused because of their work number two they didn't want to provide uh, appropriate PPE on the basis that they were saying it was expensive to provide PPE, PPE all the time so this is the notion that has been around people now they started giving people milk and because milk is white according to the psychology that i just hear and research people just thought because milk is white and your your fumes or your dusts are usually black or gray if they mix now then the milk would take away the whatever it doesn't happen another uh miss uh whatever this people think that the calcium in the milk if it reacts to these fumes now there and stuff like that but now let me tell you what these fumes do these fumes can replace some of the um the important minerals within your body especially when it comes to the bone these metals can replace calcium so your bone density now is changed instead of having your normal calcium within your bone structure now you may end up having another metal within your bone structure which means your bones can easily break because now that metal is a foreign um mineral within your bone structure so you now have your bone cancer and normally some of these metals react now with the iron that is in your blood now you start having um problems with your, your whatever your, your your exchange within your lungs because now your red blood cells uh can no longer carry enough oxygen to your organs so this is the chemistry the only thing that will help you or protect you uh when it comes to welding fumes are only maybe three or two things depending on how i explain okay the first one is use of an extraction system this is where you use a, a mechanical ventilation system that sucks out these gases as you do your work at your workstation so normally you'll be working on a workstation and you have this um gas chimney or fume chimney going up and getting the this poisonous or hazardous gases out of your um, exposure okay number two is use of personal protective equipment 
Now, when you're talking about PPE, please don't use dust masks. They don't work. When it comes to welding, you need welding air purifying respirators, not dust masks. It's the same as not having anything. Okay, all right. So, these are the two, I think. So, make sure you inform your work uh your workers about this if you're an agency practitioner and if you're an employer please save the lives of your welders by providing these two important things okay or at least be human bye now <laughs>